Our speaker this evening is uh, Dr. Iris Zaki, who is an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Uh, she did her PhD at Royal Holloway uh, University of London, where she developed her innovative interviewing method that led to a quirky first-person narrative style that depicts communities and people. Um, uh, my, her, the, some of her earlier films, My Kosher Shifts, depicts her conversations with ultra-Orthodox Jews while working as a receptionist at a Lubavitcher-owned hotel in London. And then Women in Sync explores Arab-Jewish coexistence at a Haifa hair salon. So um, her, her films have been shown at numerous festivals worldwide, receiving prestigious awards. They've been featured in, on TV in the New York Times. Iris currently teaches BA and MA students at Sapir College while also giving master classes in Europe and in the US. So with that, I was my pleasure to introduce Dr. Iris Zaki. Hi, good ev afternoon, evening. <laughs> good evening, good morning for you. Uh, it's going to be good night soon, yeah. <laughs> Very nice to be here. Uh, I'm really excited to meet you all. Tonight. Um, we, we, you and I, uh, Dr. Uh, Iris and I originally discussed how this would go. And I said, well, do you want to have slides? Do you want to do surveys? And I think she is intent on continuing in her individual, in her interviewing style. She's going to sit and listen and wait for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk as well, but oh, um, as I told Udi, I believe in uh, discussion. I think it's best for you guys, uh, you know, to ask me questions and then I can really address the things that, that yet you are most interested in. I'm here for you. Over to you, folks. Wow. Unless you want me to, to uh, you know, start by... Thank you, uh, whatever you prefer. Okay, oh, oh, so oh, uh, one question in the chat was, could you explain how you picked Tekoa? Yes. So as Udi uh, amazingly presented me, I love the, the PowerPoint. Uh, I'll ask for a copy later. Um, I started uh, by making a film where I really worked as a receptionist in London. So basically I moved to London uh, to study, uh, I, I wanted to, to live in London and I decided to uh, become a student because that was the easiest way for me to get a visa. And I ended up doing um, a, an MA course in documentary filmmaking. Still didn't plan to be a filmmaker at all. And I found a job uh, in an ultra Orthodox Jewish hotel, uh, Gold is Green, North London. Um, and I was really uh, very curious about this world uh, that in Israel, I haven't had any uh, communication or any encounters with, uh, with even religious uh, Jews. And then uh, studying for a documentary practice, I decided to make my final project on this uh, encounter. And I, I'll go back to Tkoa in a second, but basically, I you know, developed this way of interviewing people. And when I made my third film, that was Tkoa, uh, I wanted to go and see if my, this method of uh, interviewing random people and trying to create an intimacy, intimacy uh, immediately would work also with, after I did the, uh, the hair salon film, that worked amazingly. And I washed women's hair and put a camera on a tripod uh, above the sink and people opened up to me and it was very easy. I said, okay, I need to test my, my uh, abandoned camera, I call it, because I don't have any crew uh, with a community that would be more challenging. I said, okay, so two cases, it worked really beautifully. Now, if I want to challenge myself and this uh, abandoned camera technique, I need to go to, uh, a com community that I have a tension with from the outset. And it was really <laughs> very tense. Um, but yeah, so I decided to go to a settlement and I live, lived in London at the time. 
and I tried to find a settlement and I asked for people to try and help me out with this. I had a few people taking me for some tours in the West Bank uh, to see settlements. My, my initial idea was to try and find a place to work because the, the technique that I researched in this PhD was all about trying to work in a place, doing customer service. And then uh, the filmmaking is, uh, I mean, the, the communication is uh, unmediated. It's not just, I'm here to make a film about you. I'm here to wash your hair. I'm here to give you a Shabbat key and we're going to chat and I'm going to film it. And I didn't want to do like interviews. So I wanted to find a settlement where I would be able to work. And it was quite tough because they don't have a lot of businesses with customer service. And then um, while looking for one, I had a friend who uh, introduced me to Matanya. He said, look, there's this guy, we went to high school together. Uh, he's a farmer. You're going to love him, meet him, talk to him. I talked with, uh, I spoke with Matanya. He was very enthusiastic. And he, after a few minutes, he was like producing <laughs> everything for me. <laughs> and for a documentary uh, filmmaker, having, you know, a key person is such an, a, a, an important thing. And he invited me to Tkoa and I went there. And that's why I chose Tkoa. But I know that Tkoa is, I mean, I don't think that there is a typical uh, settlement. I don't think that you can say about, you know, half a million people that this is like the typical settler or the typical settlement. Uh, and I don't like this division between, you know, uh, settlements. I think that people uh, from one settlement, like there were a lot of couples that uh, someone is from Kiryat Alba and the other one is from uh, Ariel. They ended up, you know, building a house in Teco because that was the, you know, the best houses or the best prices. So people move around uh, within the settlements. But Teco, yes, it is. It has this history of uh, uh, Reb Fruman and it's very spiritual in a sense and, and artistic but uh, that wasn't the reason uh, that I chose Tkwa. Very long answer, sorry. <laughs> Another question in the chat was, did you uh, interview Rabbi Steinzel, Zichrono Levracha, or his students, or go to his yeshiva? In... You mean Rabbi Steinzel? Steinzel? I don't know, the rabbi. But she sat in place. Yeah, we were curious. Uh, I mean, I was curious how many people did, did you have conversations with who didn't make, make it into the film? I ended up speaking with uh, and filming uh, uh, 40 people. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it just seems, you know, uh, okay. I can... Yeah, because uh, if you uh, notice that, like in a lot of documentaries, you see um, that they cut between character, between, you know, people. Uh, and they, they take strong statements and cut by themes, usually. In my films, all the three films I made so far, uh, the idea is to create a situation where you get to sit with a person or stay with a person for a conversation. So it means that I have to choose just a few because I want to, to bring a, a deeper uh, experience instead of just, you know, bringing my analysis on the settlements, for instance, and then, you know, bringing a few statements or, or letting some people say some things. Uh, I prefer to have the experience of a conversation with a few people. So I did have to um, cut out or not even use at all uh, a very, like some very interesting uh, things that people said because the, the person didn't make it to the film. And even within the people that I chose, like from the people that I chose, I had to, you know, uh, lose a lot of interesting things because I wanted to edit it in a way that you feel that you are with us in a conversation because every conversation that you saw was 
around like an hour, sometimes two hours. So, yeah. It would have been a long documentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question was, do you think the fact that your mode of dress was quite different from most of the residents had an impact, affected the trust that you were able to build? Actually in Tkoa, uh, you see uh, girls in, in shorts and sometimes they're, they're even religious or half religious or it's, it's very um, common there. I wasn't at all uh, special in that sense. Even Matanya's wife, she walks around with shorts. Uh, Tkoa was all about at the beginning, it was um, established by um, a religious American uh, Jews and uh, Russian secular Jews. And the, the vision of Tkoa was uh, to have a mixed society of uh, both uh, secular and religious people. Oh, yeah. And they don't judge. Like you can, they, Matani told me you can walk one day with tzitziot and the other day with no kippah and no one would. Wow. No one, you know, small communities, people do yeah. pay attention and they do, they talk about it, maybe not in your face, but they do gossip. Um, but generally it's very, uh, I wouldn't like when I worked at the, at the Orthodox hotel, I was very modest. I wore, um, I wore only skirts and uh, I was even more um, modest than my uh, Chabad boss or the Babacha boss. Um, yeah, even though she agreed for, to, for us uh, wearing uh, trousers, I didn't want that. So I do respect, you know, uh, that wasn't the reason. I, I, and I spoke with a lot of people. Uh, I ended up speaking with a lot of people. And it was very hot. <laughs> uh, yes. To my defense, it was extremely hot. I was carrying like a lot of equipment every day on my own. It was 40 degrees, even, uh, I don't know, Fahrenheit degrees, but it was like very hot. Burning and hot. But there's a cameraman listed in the credits, you know? Or... Yeah, because so for my... Um, when I film conversations with people, I'm on my own and I lived there for over a month. It was almost two months and it was uh, June, July, very hot. And um, so I lived there and every day I brought all the equipment and I set up my, you know, my, my mini studio. And a few months later, when I edited uh, again, the, you know, the protagonists or the subject, I knew what I wanted to in order to, to tell the story. And then I took a camera person and we went for actually two sessions of a few days in order to collect, you know, the images that I want uh, for the film. And it was only after I realized how, how I want to tell the story because I only had conversations, but I didn't have the everyday life of my uh, experience there. Okay, it's a B-roll in, in, in the business. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, you know, what was, I guess, I mean, I guess was, how much of the goal was to persuade anyone or just to understand? I, I guess somewhere in the balance between understanding and persuasion, were you trying to go or did do you think you got? I remember that at the beginning, I had this like conversation with myself uh, about, debating or, or political, you know, in Israel, people argue all the time. And I'm not someone who, you know, I'm very outspoken. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't hesitate about, you know, never about expressing my opinions about everything. But I realized that going to settlement, first of all, like, just like I was wearing like modest um, clothes in the hotel, going to a settlement, I need to respect the fact that, you know, I was uh, accepted by some of uh, their community there and I lived there and I didn't want to come. So I, I was very, you know, open about my opinions. I said, yeah, I'm left wing and I'm, I want to make a film here. It's not like I'm going to lie to, do, to you that I'm right wing. And in order for you to open up to me, I'm going to be honest with you. However, my, my goal even was to make people open up to me and to my camera. As I said, that's, that's the idea of my, my technique. So I think that political 
debates and arguing politically is like it closes people down. It doesn't they start to be defensive and, and aggressive and and that wasn't something that I wanted. And also I think that I'm not going to, you know, convince anyone and no one is going to convince me. If anything, if anything, I wanted to get to know the people there. And by getting, like, by making them feel comfortable to express their thoughts and, and opinions, I gained much more than, you know, arguing about 67 and 48. And I also think that in my films, I don't want to bring like, you know, a lot of documentaries today you have uh, on Netflix, you have experts sitting in, in a studio spotlight on their faces and they, you know, they need to discuss things that they are, they were, um, that they really know and understand a lot about. And that's one thing. But when I go to like regular people and they uh, respect me by letting me, you know, film them, I really respect them in return. And um, I do believe that the personal experience is more important than the political uh, opinions, the exchange of political opinions because I, I believe that in my film, it is these uh, personal experiences that are political at the end of the day. So if you hear from Nava about uh, becoming a Hilltop Youth member, it's her personal story, but it is political. So if I ended up sitting down with people and you know we said, Oh yeah, we need to, you know, return the the uh, the West Bank. Oh no, it's never gonna happen. It wouldn't be interesting for you to watch or interesting for me to be there. And trust me, it would. They would. They're better than me <laughs> in arguing. They know all their, you know, their agendas. They know why they're there. Um, and actually, if anything, I felt that I don't know enough. You know, I'm, I'm sitting. I'm living in Tel Aviv. I don't know. Enough. I know things from my leftist perspective that is also like um, limited. Mm -hmm. I've never explored it uh, enough to be able to, to sit there and say things that politicians do. Politicians do. I'm not a politician. So again, you, log, log answer. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, so it sounds like you weren't there necessarily to win hearts and minds, to win people over. You were there to make an interesting film. An interesting experience that would translate to a film later on. If the, if the experience is not interesting, I believe the film wouldn't be interesting, but I was really there to, to go through some journey. And well, so tell, us, so tell us about that. What was most surprising to you or what was most interesting to you about that journey? That's, that should be the last question. Oh, no, is it? Uh, yeah, let's move okay. it around. I'll no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. It. No, I'm joking. Uh, surprising, <laughs> I'll tell you what was really surprising. The fact that I felt with people kind of like my generation, my age, that we are very similar. It felt to me like I'm sitting and speaking with my friends in Tel Aviv. Same thing. Wow. That was very surprising. Like politics aside, we grew up on the same content. We, you know, we have the same slang. I came from London to straight to Tel Aviv and everyone, like people use some words because it's in Israel, there are trends that, you know, come and go after a very short while. And then I went to the settlement, same, people say the same thing, things. I think Facebook has something to do with it probably, but generally I felt in Israel, I felt like, uh, in many senses, at home. And after making this film, I, I stayed in Israel. I never returned to London. I just went back and forth for my PhD. But actually, the experience in the settlement made me go back to Israel. <laughs> Did you become more of an activist? Have you, know, have you used what you learned in the interactions to become an activist? 
uh, you know, political activist or? I don't think that the, the uh, traditional um, definition of activist, but I think that I am an activist by doing things like we're doing now. And actually, you know, I think it is as important to talk about these thing, things as it is to, you know, promote anti-occupation uh, movements and things like that, because I really think that in Israel, the problem now, first of all, you need to take care of your own, you know, home and family. And I think that in Israel, some parts of society cannot communicate with other parts of society. And there's a lot of like hate at the moment. And um, I know that my camp or my political camp uh, we really patronize when we talk about right wing. So for me, this film was a lesson in that as well, because um, I realized how left, leftist people talk about settlers or even talk to me after making this film. And I think that it's also something that one should, you know, promote and be an activist um, these days because we can't move anywhere if we're not even communicating properly. You, you did a beautiful job of modeling constructive communication. How, I'm curious, what did, uh, how was that seen in Israel? What was the reception to that example in Israel? There's always, you know, Michal Fruman uh, from, from the film uh, who was um, stabbed and then opened her house to, you know, people, Palestinians. Um, she's amazing. And we went to this Israeli TV uh, show um, and we were interviewed together. And he asked her, uh, Kobe Maidan asked her about um, people be becoming more radical, more extreme. And she said, you know what? I, I think that the, extreme, the extremists are louder. They make more, <laughs> more um, fuss or, she said like, I, I receive a lot of like beautiful messages as well. And um, in my experience from making the film, I can also tell you that I, I have a lot of memories from like people really like not attacking me, but being being very aggressive towards me on stage, both in Israel and abroad. Uh, but the amount of beautiful things that I, 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 I got from people, from audiences um, is way bigger in numbers. Uh, but I do remember, you know, the things that were at the beginning tough for me, I was very scared to when I was editing this film, when I was filming, I was under a lot of pressure. When I was editing the film, it was a different uh, kind of stress. I was, I felt like I'm going to court and I'm going to be judged politically. That everything, not that I say, that is said on the film is going to be used against me. <laughs> I was really nervous. And my editor was as nervous. And when my editor first saw the materials, and he was the one that really uh, encouraged me to make the film happen after all, because I, I, I shot everything and then I was like, I'm not going to even watch it. I'm going to just choose some stuff for my PhD and there won't be a film. And then he said, I think there is something here. And he sat down and watched a lot of materials. And then at the beginning, every few minutes he stopped it was like, I, I cannot listen to them. I, I cannot watch it. I, I don't like it. How didn't you tell them this and that and this and that? It was like very, very <laughs> upset. And after a few days, I saw that what happened to me happened to him. He started to listen. It was like, hmm, there is some points in things they say here and this and that. And later on, he told me that it was really uh, a, a journey for him, even when he has like arguments with his wife, the idea of narratives that there is no one reality, that there is the same reality, but people have different narratives. 
and it's not that I'm right and they're wrong. That's how they see it. That's how I see it. There are some facts. There are some, you know, black and white things. But generally, the answer to the situation in Israel is very complicated. It's complex. And, but remind me the, the, the question. Sorry. What was the, <laughs> I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> about, about, about. I guess the, rece well, the reception in Israel and... Uh... The reception in Israel, people loved it. It's the most popular documentary on, on uh, the, the um, Khan 11, which is the, the public broadcaster. That's terrific. The most watched one they've ever made. Um, but I think it's also because of the subject. Uh, people recognized me when I was, wow. you know, on the street. Uh, I got some great, you know, uh, reactions, both from left and right. And there were quite a few, you know, people who said, why didn't you didn't ask them this or confronted them with that. But it's not about that. That's not what the film is about for me. For you, it was more about understanding their narrative. Is that you know, when you say it's not about, I guess, arguing it's, with them? It's both about understanding their narrative and expressing uh, different narratives. Um, um, it's about rethinking some some things that I I and people think they know everything about or have very strong opinion about. And then when you see something that is a bit gray, it's not black and white, you say, but how can I categorize it? It's about that. It's about, for instance, people that were born in the settlement and they're second generation. So what are we doing now? You know, it's their home. So it's about complicating things, not making things easier for, for my viewers and for myself, because I think that it's very hard for people in Israel, maybe in the world, but I don't like to, to, to speak about countries I'm not from, even though a lot of people in the world like to think, speak about Israel as if they're from there. Uh, people find it hard to say, I'm not sure what is the answer. I'm not sure what I believe in. I like, people really like to, to say they know what's you know the solution or what's wrong and right, but I'm very confused. It's not that I'm confused about the occupation. I'm not. I think it's bad and I think it has to stop. But I'm confused about what's the best way and how to do it and whether it's possible given the situation and given this very long period um, that it's been like that and you know two people like hating each other now and 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 they don't trust each other it's 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 very complicated and i think that it's uh, something that i'm i was also i get a bit older <laughs> and now being 40 something i'm not so scared of you know by saying like i'm not sure about this and that like uh, I'm, I'm very respectful of, you know, Judaism and 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 uh, religious people and Zionism. Uh, a lot of my friends would say they're anti-Zionism without hesitating. I hesitate. I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> Things here are complicated in this country and in the world. Uh, that's something that this film made me like, you know, able to say. You were not yeah. shy about expressing your areas of disagreement, but yet you you did it in a very acceptable, you know, palatable way. Uh, were you still holding back in some respects, or again, you were not looking to get into an argument? Um, as I said, I think that most of the things that were said were personal and about personal experiences that I reacted to, not about you know like uh, the occupation is okay. I don't I don't care about Palestinians. No one said that except for one uh, woman that I actually like very much, uh, Moria. And I did tell her what I think uh, about Israel. Uh, I also used the word apartheid once, and um, 
I did say that I what I think what is happening to Israel as a society is very bad. Um, so I don't think I that I did hold back. I think that um, when people express their you know personal stories, I reacted to to it. Um, and also, you know, if at the end of the film you have Matanya, you know, a, a settler, farmer from there, he thinks he has the right to be there. Uh, but then he says that it's wrong and that the government is has to decide, you know, what to do. And I, I found it very refreshing. I thought it was amazing that someone, because the, the perception in, in, in Tel Aviv, at least, is that settlers enjoy the situations being like that, you know, enjoy the status quo of not deciding anything. And then he said, you know, you have to decide what's going on, like what, what you're doing with this area, because there are more people here that are suffering from this situation. And well, for me, it's stronger than me, you know, arguing or saying that things. One of the things that emerged was that there are a lot of people there for a lot of different reasons. So some of them yeah. feel less or, or less strong or not as strong. They could be persuaded to reach an agreement of some kind. Maybe, inshallah. <laughs> Let's see what other questions we might have here. If, or feel free also, just speak up, take yourself off mute and you can ask also. Go ahead, Kevin. <coughs> Hi, shalom. Shalom. Th thank you so much for coming. Your, your, your film prompted like my wife and I to have really, really interesting discussions. Thank you so much. Um, so two, two very quick questions. One, did you get a chance to go to the Rabbi Stein Solch Yeshiva in Tekoa and interview any of his students? And two, um, having done a film in Haifa, does that give you the most hope as like an example, like Dugma in Israel of Arab and Israeli uh, peaceful coexistence? Uh, yes, <laughs> that would be the shortest uh, answer. Um, I'm giving here. Generally, I think it's again, it's complicated. Also in Haifa, it is complicated, and there are still it's far from being you know equal for Jews and Arabs um, in some senses. But I think that Haifa, which I, I am here in Haifa now at my mother's, um, I think it is really it's much better than anywhere else in Israel. I I generally think that people if they put together, they do get along. If they get to know each other, uh, you know, that's the best way for people to become friends and, and you know, uh, stereotypes happen when you don't know something. So you fill it with, you know, categorizing, generalizing. And in Haifa, people do meet. Uh, actually, I, I realized I, I went to the north of Israel um, a few times recently uh, for for different reasons, and then I saw a lot of like uh, people that back in the days before COVID, when we went to coffee shops and things like that. So you, there were waiters and and things like uh, Arab waiters, and you don't see that in Tel Aviv. So I think that Tel Aviv is the the place where you really don't see any, you know, any Arabs around. In Haifa you do, in the north of Israel you do, and in other, you know, places in the in the south. Um, but that's, I think, what happened in Haifa, where people mix, you know, it is better. And there is, I do believe there is hope um, that people need to do some things. And, and very quickly, I'm just curious, did, did you have a chance to go to the Rabbi Stein Solch Yeshiva? No, I didn't even know. I don't even know the name. Okay. Did you uh, have a chance to watch the finished film with re residents of Tekoa? Yeah, so I had uh, uh, the first the uh, premiere of the film uh, in Tel Aviv. I invited all of them. As some of them came, they were very, very happy and excited um, by the result. Uh, they didn't know what to expect. 
Um, but I remember that Moria, uh, she's actually the, the granddaughter of um, Levinger, if you know him. Um, so she said, Iris, you put things as they are. I love it. And even though, you know, I'm, I'm a bit with the conversation with her, I'm quite, uh, I do talk back. Um, and then Matanya uh, didn't come because his mom uh, died, died uh, not long uh, before. And then he, for a whole year, he didn't go to cinemas. And I went to his house and he brought some friends and we watched it there. But eventually everyone watched it. And I was in touch with them to, to hear what they have to say. And their feedback was by and large positive. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Some people in Tkoa didn't like the film because, <laughs> I mean, there were always the people that say uh, it doesn't represent, you know, settlers. You cannot represent settlers in a film, I think. You cannot represent half a million people. Uh, there was a film that was trying to map out or map um, Sorry, um, my English is not. Uh, um, you know the the the, the um, types of settlers. Okay. And categorize it for you and tell you what's who's who and everything. Uh, I don't believe in that. I believe in you know uh, bringing a few, uh, just a few people, <clears throat> and from them to give you an experience about a community. Uh, so some people said, you know, it doesn't represent or this and that. For me, it's not about the people being like representatives of. It's about the themes that were brought up by these people from the film that are themes that were the ones that were most, uh, that were the strongest in my experience, or I think that are ones that we should think or rethink about. Um, what in your mind were some of those main themes that you think that emerged? Growing up in a settlement, um, you know, not being black and white in the way that not, you know, not not, not caring about Palestinians, um, the idea of home, um, the, how much Tel Aviv and the settlements, like how left and right and different narratives, all of these things, I think, are, it's not about representing settlers. I'm not doing National Geographic on penguins. Yeah. Uh, that's not my idea. Um, Although when you just planted yourself with the camera, it's, it's, it seemed like that at first. <laughs> you were a nature photographer. The what? You were a nature photographer. You just kind of planted yourself in a in, a, in your hide to, to wait and see what's Waited going on. Waiting for the fauna to, the fawn, the fawn <laughs> to pass by. Yeah. Um, so no, that's. Uh, but but the, oh, so the people in the car that didn't like it said uh, or had a problem with it said that I only showed, you know, the more hippie the car and. Actually, Tukai is very hippie in, you know, the spirit of it is hippie. Uh, there are a lot of villas, but I focused on Tukai Dalet and Gimel and where I lived, Tukai Bet. And um, first of all, from my experience, it was the, this dissonance between, you know, hippie, yoga, vibe, and, you know, the being in a settlement. And also it's, Cinematically, it's more beautiful. The villas, you know, it's very, I didn't like the images, but uh, when I had people at the audience uh, telling me at uh, the Jerusalem Cinematheque, how come you didn't, you didn't show, you know, the, the, the better sides of Tkoa, you know, you make Tkoa look like, you know, a shithole. And I was like, next time I'm going to show the world how rich and beautiful the villas of Tkoa and the settlers and that will do a really good job for you guys. We, the, you froze because, a little bit. You said next time you're going to show the, oh, the, 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 the rich and beautiful villas 
of the settlers and that will do a great job for you in the world. <laughs> <laughs> in a sequel. Did you consider interviewing any of the Palestinian workers or would that have been off topic? And uh, no, the film is about Israel, uh, left, right in Israel, and uh, not about Palestinians. There are there also there no there are no Palestinians, you know, that you can talk to in the Koa. They are faceless, and that's what I wanted to show. Uh, and I think after making Women in Sync with Arab, Israeli Arab, or Palestinian Israeli, or Israeli Palestinians, or um, Israeli Arabs, that I decided that I'm not going to try and represent Arabs as an Israeli Jew. And I think that, you know, it would be amazing if a Palestinian would make, you know, a similar thing, but I don't think that as a Jew, I will get the openness that I want from Palestinians. Uh, that's clear. Okay, I think uh, who else, you know, speak up if I missed your question or if you have an additional question, take yourself off of mute. And... I have a quick question, um, two actually. One, did you serve in the IDF? And if so, what were you, what was your unit? And also, um, do you think there's a difference? <laughs> I don't remember. Do you think there's a difference between saying um, Aravim, as you say it throughout the documentary versus in English subtitles, they keep saying Palestinian, Gee, were those two words different or are they like the same meaning? It's a good question. Um, I did serve the IDF um, at the time. It, now, a lot of people who don't want, they just don't go. I was a good girl and I went, but it wasn't uh, very good for me. Um, yeah, but I was in intelligence, some, some unit. Um, Aravim and Palestinians, yeah. I remember that my brother told me, you guys should say, he's a, he's a more politician and from those you know, areas. Um, he said, you should say Palestinians. Uh, but I realized that the uh, settlers say Arabs. I think it's, it's also, I realized that it, when I, I, I did the hair salon uh, film, that when I want to say Jews, I say Israelis. Like the Arabs are not Israelis, even though they were. So it's, but I think it should, you know, Palestinians is more accurate um, to the, this situation. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, this is Sue Keel. I, I came away from the film actually somewhat optimistic that if people can really talk with each other, as you were able to uh, elicit so much from these individuals, and even that woman who had been attacked, but still was so open, you know, realizing that uh, without getting to know your neighbors, you're never going to be able to get along with them. Uh, I thank you for, did you come away optimistic? That's my question to you, Iris. That's a, it's a, a very good question. Um, yes, I think that I, I always have this um, hope in me and I am very happy you said that you left the film very optimistic and that's, that's a good thing uh, without you know, forgetting how tough things are or complicated, but it is important I think because when you stop being that, you cannot really change things. And when you are optimistic and you do have hope, you can really still do things and not just be lazy and say, ah, things are so bad, I'm not going to be bothered. I think it's a good thing. And I am, I believe. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gotten several requests of where can people see women in sync? Uh, there is a link of a VOD uh, to Women in Sync that I can send you. Okay, I will. I will send it as a follow-up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I think Kevin. Can you post the link to make the donation in the chat again? Because if you came in after, you can't see it. That's easily enough done. Thank you.
Okay. Yeah, I would definitely go back to Tkoa. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm I, still in touch with people there. There was a question in yes, the chat. Yes, yeah, just... it's in the chat, correct. <laughs> I'm helping you. Um, yeah, I still really, I mean, I, I always, from the beginning, I had mixed feelings. Uh, I really liked it there and I really hated it there. Uh, at the same time, there were people that were really, really nice, did the, the extra mile. Uh, I remember I had my birthday after about two weeks that I was there and I, I couldn't film. I, I had problems, people didn't want me there, like there was a lot of drama at the beginning. But it was my birthday and I had three different invites. One uh, wanted to do to have, have, have this bonfire with friends playing guitar, hippie, I said. Uh, another one cooked dinner, uh, Matani and his wife. And I was like, I had to choose where to go on my birthday. That was beautiful. Um, so I always really liked it there, but I really suffered. <laughs> and it was very tough, again, uh, physically for me on my own. It was very lonely. I, I rented a place there, uh, uh, an apartment, and it was empty. I didn't have any furniture, just you know the equipment, bed, and all the dramas with people there. Uh, there were quite a few people on Facebook uh, that talked about me and I, I saw it later on from my friends. And I, I was very tired of trying to, you know, convince people that I'm not an evil media, um, you know, what, the drama on Facebook was that coming from the left or from the right or from both? No, from the from the, the, the Tkoa people. From the Tkoa people. At the, at the beginning. They were suspicious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very suspicious. And um, but I still I would still go back. You know, I, I went there uh, after a while. They had a party there. Um, I mean, some people, some of my friends, they boycott, you know, um, products from the settlements. I don't, I don't, I don't think it, it's really, it changes anything. I think as long as the government supports it, I don't think that me buying ginger, they make, you know, the, the only Israeli ginger or shiitake mushrooms, a lot of organic products come from the settlement. So the, the Tel Avivians, that are most most vegan people in Israel are from Tel Aviv and they love organic food. They have to choose whether to be <laughs> organic <laughs> or boycott the settlements. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I think we're gonna let Iris go back to sleep. It's very early. not back. Not back. Go to sleep. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Yeah. No, yeah. I told you I'm a, I'm a night owl. It's okay. Oh okay. All right. Well, thank you for staying up with us.